Welcome to the Catamaran Company Charter Base in Tortola, British Virgin Islands. My name is Erin and today we will be talking about the official government approved mooring sites for your four day quarantine period. Before we get there, I would like to go through uh, what you can expect while traveling here. So once you get off the plane, you'll be required to wear your mask at all times and wash your hands frequently. You will go through customs and immigration and you will receive your first PCR test. You will also get a monitoring device. You will then uh, take a taxi to our base here in Hodges Creek, where you will need to go uh, directly to the boat. Unfortunately, we can't greet you with a hug or a handshake, but we will be waving at you from the balcony. You can always call us on uh, our phone or you can use the boat's VHF radio and we'll be on channel 12 during business hours. So once you're here and on the boat, this is your quarantine bubble and you will stay on the boat um, for the duration of the quarantine period. Once you receive your first negative PCR test, you will be able to leave the dock and go to these uh, official government mooring sites. You will then stay on your boat bubble in these mooring sites. You will get a, another uh, PCR test on day four. Once you have received the results for that test on day five, and they're all, everyone in your group is negative, you will be able to freely sail around the British Virgin Islands within the BVI boundary map. Okay, let's get started on those uh, official government mooring sites. Numbers one and two, you'll find on Norman Island. Number one, Benures Bay, is on the north side of Norman. Benures is a straightforward entry. Just follow your chart plotter and grab a mooring ball. It is relatively quiet here, getting about as much wind as you would in the bite. If you have to anchor, it is quite deep, so be sure to come close to shoreline and drop chain in 15 to 20 feet of water on a sandy bottom. Be careful as you can get back winded here. We recommend this bay for overnight. Number two is found right beside Benyers Bay, Soldier Bay. This bay faces northeast, so you'll be greeted by the early morning sun. There are five mooring balls available here, and that's about as much traffic as the bay can comfortably handle. Soldier Bay is a lovely overnight anchorage. During the winter months, if the wind is out of the north, it can get very windy, but during the summer months, it's a wonderful, serene spot. Numbers three, four, and five are located on Peter Island. These bays are located on the southern side of the island. They are open bays, so expect some wind. We recommend them for day moorings only. Number three is South Bay, which is anchor only, and it's a straightforward entry. Number four, we have White Bay, which is also a straightforward entry. You can anchor on a sandy bottom in 15 feet of water. Number five is Spring Bay or Welk Bay. Again, another straightforward entry. Uh, just don't go too close to the northwestern side as it has a shallow bank. You will see when you look to your port. Uh, make sure your anchor holds well in the sandy bottom. Number six is Hallovers Bay on Cooper Island. To get to this bay from the channel, you will sail between Salt and Cooper. Be cautious and stay slightly closer to Cooper when passing as there is a rock awash on the eastern extremity of Salt. We recommend this as a daytime anchorage only as it can get pretty rolly in the southerly winds. Coming into the bay, stay clear of the reef on the southern portion. Drop your anchor in 20 feet of water in the northern part of the bay and dive in. You'll find great snorkeling right from your boat. Moving on to number seven, we have Valley Trunk Bay, which is located between the Baths and Spanish Town on Virgin Gorda. Be very careful on approach. You must get here in good daylight to see the reef and you must have someone on the lookout. It is a very tight entry. 
Approach from the north as there is reef to the south. Going in, the depth is 12 feet and gets shallower as you move in. Once inside, anchor on sandy bottom and make sure your anchor is well set. This is an overnight anchorage. Number eight, Long Bay on Virgin Gorda. Open to the southwest, this bay is an easy approach from the west. This anchorage is sustainable only when there is no ground sea running. Anchor on a sandy bottom in 15 to 29 feet of water. There are a few national parks moorings available for daytime use and dive balls marking the spot for the sunken Kodiak Queen. This is an overnight anchorage. Let's move up into North Sound where we'll find number nine, Malone Bay. Once in the sound, this is a straightforward approach. Anchor in 16 to 32 feet of water, and it is an overnight anchorage. Number 10, George Dog. Pick up a day mooring at the west side of George, provided by the National Parks Trust. This is a daytime mooring only. Number 11, Lee Bay on Great Kamino Island. Be sure not to try to go through Little and Great Kamino as this is a no-go area and you will run aground. Lee Bay is a great little hidden gem on the west coast of Great Kamino. Approach from the west from Guana Island, Monkey Point and head to the northern end of Little Kamino until you can identify the bay. The entrance is straightforward with no obstructions. The best spot to anchor is in the northeast corner of the bay in front of the saddle of the hill in 15 feet of water. The holding ground is good. Please take care not to anchor in coral. When a northerly sea condition is present during the winter months and surf is breaking on the northern tip of Camino, the resulting ground swell can work its way into the anchorage. We recommend this for daytime only. Number 12, Muskmelon Bay on Guana Island. The approach is straightforward. This bay is open to the northeast wind and swell, making it quite rolly in the winter months. We recommend this for a daytime mooring only. Number 13, Pomato Point in Anagata. A small bay northwest of Pomato Point. The anchorage is due north 1.2 nautical miles of waypoint BV410. Leaving from North Sound, go 10 degrees north and that will put you in line with the bay. Upon entry, the buoys are for some reason in a straight line, so stay close to starboard while passing. You can anchor in 12 to 15 feet of water on a sandy bottom before you reach the mooring field. We recommend this as a nighttime anchorage. Number 14 is Manchineal Bay on Little Yoss Van Dyke. You can approach from the south or the east. It is a straightforward entry. Once in, you will anchor on rocky, sandy, and grassy bottoms, so be sure to set your anchor well. This is a good overnight anchorage, except when you have north swells in the winter months. At Little Harbor, there are no obstructions coming into this beautiful bay. Just don't cut the point too close as the reef extends 100 feet towards the west from the shore. There are no moorings, so you'll have to anchor. In the center of the bay, it's about 40 to 60 feet, making the best spot to anchor up in the eastern reaches of the bay where it's 15 to 25 feet and over a sandy bottom. You will be back-winded, so check your swinging room relative to other vessels. There is a reef on the southwestern side of the bay, which is 40 to 60 feet deep, making it hard to see, and we ask that you please save the reef and do not anchor here. And then we're going to go to Great Harbor. This is a straightforward entry with excellent depth all around. There's a large ship mooring at the north end of the bay. Uh, Ocean 7 Beach Bar and Restaurant is on the western side in Button Bay. There are plenty of mooring balls in Great Harbor. Payment can be made ashore if you are going to stay overnight. In the southernmost part of the bay is a protected fishing area, so if you are going to anchor here, 
locate a spot in about 20 feet of water to the west of the beach or along the headland that extends to the northwest. Anchoring here can get tricky, so make sure your anchor is well set. Dead Man's Bay. Dead Man's is in the easternmost anchorage on Peter Island. It's a straightforward entry and you may anchor at the southeast end of the beach. On the western side of the beach is the clearly marked swimming area and that is for resort guests only. The bottom is grassy and it can be difficult to set your anchor here. We don't recommend anchoring overnight uh, as the winds can change rapidly and the, any swell activity make it hazardous. 